Howdy folks, in today's video we'll go ahead and learn how to make a CAT6 Ethernet cable. We'll use the two-piece Ethernet cable connectors and the only tool you really need in order to make this work successfully is a crimping tool and everything else that we may use here you can kind of improvise and use any tools that you may already have throughout the house. Let's get started. And since we're trying to make a CAT6 cable, the first thing to do is to verify that the cable we have is actually truly in fact a CAT6 cable. You'll see stamps on the actual cable, it's going to be in small print obviously, but you can verify that uh, that is the case, at least all quality cables should have that printout, and in this case we know we have a CAT6 cable. So the first cut is very important because you want to remove the jacket, but you do not want to damage the wires that are inside. You'll have eight 23 gauge small wires and they're extremely brittle. They're careful. Now with CAT6, they're CAT6 cable, they're better than CAT5 cables, which are a little bit thinner. Nonetheless, you have to be very careful. So if you can make sure to remove the jacket and be extremely careful, and remove it that way, you can. The thing is that there is always a risk of you cutting into those wires. So if I do it this way, even if you have the tool set right, you have to be sure 100% that you did not connect those wires. You have to watch them very carefully. If you're unsure, the reason you have this ripcord right here is specifically for that reason. And you can use the ripcord to pull it down in order to remove a little bit more of the jacket. This way you know that all the wires that are under this section here are not damaged when you remove the jacket here with a cutter. All right, so you'll do as much of it as you can. And now we can remove the jacket here and also the rip cord. All right, now we can pull some of those cables apart. And the other thing we want to do is remove the plastic separator piece. It just separates all of the uh, wires and you want to do it as slow as low as possible without again touching or causing uh, any of those wires to actually uh, Become damaged so you have to be very careful with that now we can we know we'll be working with a section here We can just go ahead and remove the excess wires so that we don't have to um, Untwist them and only untwist the section that we'll be working with here All right, so uh, now we can untwist them. There are a couple ways to do it. You can do it by using your fingers obviously and start on twisting them that way. The other way to do it is if you saved a little bit of the jacket when you removed, make your life a little bit easier and you can use that to assist you when you do that. Okay, do it this way. There we go. Just makes it go quicker without having to actually untwist them um, without it. Alrighty, now there are a couple of schemes you probably already saw online on how to coordinate it together. Pick one, there is 568B, 568A, doesn't matter, I don't really care. So uh, we'll be using uh, 568B here, but as I said, pick the one that you want. So uh, now that they're untwisted, make sure you arrange them in that appropriate way. So we'll start with orange white, orange, um, and then I'm leaving it for the camera so you can see it. Ideally, what you should be doing when you're doing this yourself now, um, you will bend it a little bit with your finger every time you pick a wire so that you are straightening it out. You see all those kind of ripples on the wire? You don't want them. You want them straight. And it's going to get there. No, it's not perfect. So orange, white, and then we have orange, right? I guess it all is going to depend on how we're going to hold the cable. So um, we have orange, white, orange. And then we need our green, white right here. And we're going to go with blue. All right, now that we're back in focus, orange, white, orange, green, white, blue. And we're going to go with our blue, white, green, and it's going to be brown, white, brown. But we're going to do it this way. When you're looking at the wires, just see where they're arranged here. So when you untwist them, uh, when you arrange them, so that they're going to be the most direct way without causing any initial uh, unnecessary twist. So again, we're going to make sure that they are all arranged correctly. Orange, white, orange, green, white. Okay, that was a speck. <laughs> I thought uh, there was something over there. 
So orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. All right. And now I think we're ready to cut them further down and uh, start loading it into the loading bar. So uh, let's talk about the loading bar now. So as we're looking at the loading bar, you'll see the bottom section is flat and then the top side has a section that is pointing up. So keep that in mind. So with the pointed side up pointing facing toward the cables, now we can actually load those wires into the loading bar. And then once we do that, we'll re-verify that they're still in the correct arrangement. All right, so you can see orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. And now uh, now that the cables are loaded in there and they're correct, we're going to cut them off right at the edge right here to make sure they're all straight. If they're not cut straight, then you can just do it again until it is. At this point, we're ready to insert the cable and then crimp it. So we want to make sure that the copper is facing up. And then the loaded bar with the, remember said so it had a raised edge, so the raised edge should be pointing up as well. So it is pointing up, it is facing up, and now we can actually go ahead and push the cable into the connector. You may have heard a little click when that happened, that is when the loading bar actually enters all the way in. Once the loading bar is in and the cables are in, you will verify that you can see all those cables that are making the appropriate contact at the very end. Because once you crimp it, there is no going back. You'll have to cut it and start it all over again. And at this point again, it never hurts to re-verify that you have everything correct and that it looks good before you crimp it. Once you verified it and it looks good, it's time to crimp the connection. You have to make sure to load the connector into the crimper correctly. If you do it incorrectly, it's not going to work right. What I mean by this, watch carefully how the crimper works. When I start pushing down the crimp, there are a couple of things that are happening. On the, the side facing the camera, there is a flat bar that is pushing down. At the same time, if we look at the other side right now, you will see that it actually has kind of the, uh, the small pin pushers and they crimp the actual eight cables to the copper connectors. So you need to make sure that your cable is actually facing or entering the crimper correctly. So when we'll be crimping this, the flat piece is going to crimp this part right here. And then the small eight pin connectors are actually gonna push on these in order to make a good connection. At this point, we can go ahead and crimp the connection once we verify that it all looks good. If you're not sure, you can do it a couple of times. I like to do it a couple of times to make sure we have a good connection. And when you pull this, you know, don't go crazy here, but you should be able to pull it and not feel any give. It should be a good solid cable. So, again, we have a good connection here. And now you'll follow the same process on the other end of the cable, uh, making sure that you follow the same format, whether you picked 568A or 568B. Make sure the configuration of the wires are are the same and then proceed to do the same thing. Now that we have the cable with the connections on, we can just plug it in and test it. If you'll be doing a lot of these, you can consider uh, using some sort of a testing tool like this one. This one is old, but works very well. You'll put in one on each end, and then verify that we have good parity across all cables. So one and two, three and six, four and five, and seven, eight cables are successfully communicating. This is a good cable and we're done. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and beneficial. Take care.